for me, uh, online learning is something where uh, connectivity becomes very important. So you can connect to online learning opportunities whenever you can, from where you can. So from our perspective, um, the value or the benefit of online learning is to be able to provide spaces for youth workers who are looking for um, learning opportunities but do not necessarily have the time or the financial resources to go on residential courses but also to, um, to really be able to target exactly what they need to learn. So not necessarily to, to follow a whole process, but go directly for their, their needs, their learning needs. And uh, so this, this question of temporality and flexibility is uh, definitely a, an added value, yeah. Um, uh, MOOCs, especially open online courses, they um, pull a lot of uh, material into one place because it's very often scattered around and especially people who are new to the field, so they just came, um, they don't know actually where to look for interesting and good material. So uh, I think these online courses, they help really to structure and, and find material in, in one place. Uh, blended learning, which includes online elements, but not just, so it keeps the, let's say, traditional residential courses. Um, it's really an opportunity to somehow extend the learning process, to allow the groups, the learners, to really not just focus on five days and they need to process everything, but to have support elements and tools uh, that allow them to really reflect further, to come back to what was learned and so on. So in a way to extend the process in the life of the group. Yeah. A good online course offering diversity of different forms of learning and interesting content um, Maybe it's a challenging in the beginning for users, for learners, when they need to understand the platform, the navigation, understand who is there. But that's quite similar to residential training, when people arrive and the first day, first moments are a bit challenging because of a new environment, online environment in this case is also maybe a challenge in the beginning, but a good course turns very fast into a smooth process where participants are focusing at the content, uh, they are inspired by uh, learning uh, new things and not necessarily see all the context of the process. I also think that there are quite big differences between facilitated online learning courses and self-paced online learning courses, which is important to take into account when designing the contents. Because if the course is not facilitated, this means that the learners are more on their own and then this has an influence on what kinds of activities actually make sense and then also if the course is not facilitated nobody is there really to to moderate for example discussions so maybe then it's worth thinking what kinds of discussions are even encouraged in the case of utopia we were able to already discuss before the training course some of the main notions of, the, of this interconnectedness of in, in Europe, for example, and what we mean by that, but also uh, so introduce already some viewpoints of, of people before the training course, and also to discuss diversity as a, as a topic to, to before the training course. Before the training. I think it's actually very useful for trainings, because uh, in our case it allowed us to share materials, resources with the group that we thought were important for them to explore before they come here for the training, so that everyone is on the same level of understanding of the subject. And we can start a bit uh, forward in the process compared to what we would have started mm -hmm. otherwise. And we also have these tasks that the participants had to complete, uh, and the platform allows them to upload the tasks and to share them with us, but also with the rest of the team. So in this way, they could engage in discussions beforehand, already start um, understanding what other people think about the subjects. And it gave us, gave us the opportunity to give feedback and to uh, ask additional questions that took them further in the, in the process, of, in the thinking process. The advantage is definitely that the online learning can bridge the local context of the participants and the international training course. So in this way that obviously when the participants are still in the online learning phase, they are still in their local environment. And, uh, but at the same time, they are a little bit already oriented to this international activity. And then also it was quite nice what we did uh, in this online learning 
activities that we had some assignments or exercises where the participants were asked to do something in their local youth work environment. I think the blended <coughs> could be interesting uh, because I think we are quite aware that, uh, that the residential uh, training opportunities are shrinking in terms of time and, and the offer. And I think another need that is there is potentially that, there, that the opportunities are not mapped, they're not linked, so there are really these short periods of time when you can do it. So on one hand that's a benefit, I think, but then the blended learning gives an opportunity to provide uh, learning processes where you need really people to go through a longer term learning, reflection, application in practice, going back to reflection or whatever needs to be, need to be there without time and even money investment, to mm. be honest. Well, again, if, if we only look at uh, online learning and not, not yet uh, blended learning, uh, it's again this possibility to go for snappy, short learning opportunities, which can be useful for NAs to pass on a message or to, to really share uh, a learning point and for, for, for youth workers or for users to again really target what they want to learn. Maybe one, one thing to add also um, with regard to that, I think it's also the possibility to reach out to more um, young people or youth workers or, or trainers or whoever is there to, to learn. So it doesn't limit it to a group of 20 or 24 uh, persons, but really gives the opportunity, opportunity sorry, to reach out to, uh, to many more uh, people. So I would say that's also mm. an added value. Um, in general, if I would think of, of several MOOCs that I was involved, um, I think for national agencies, it's about um, reaching out to more people and reaching out to people uh, who uh, maybe usually would not apply for international activities because of many reasons. For example, it's a youth worker who is alone in the youth center and cannot really leave the place. Or it's a person who doesn't feel uh, confident to be in a course in English language, for example. Specifically MOOC which we designed, it's uh, basically about uh, offering a structured way of learning about uh, Erasmus Plus opportunities for youth. And I know from experience, and especially if you are new to the field, it's so difficult to find this information in an organized way. For there are plenty of resources, but they are all over internet. And I think when you have them organized, accessible, flexibly uh, offered, then it makes sense a lot for learners to, to follow. I think uh, it's a lot of information to digest and understand when it comes to different opportunities what Erasmus Plus can offer. And I think if you're again starting, then uh, going step by step helps you to really take time and if you want to revisit and, and do uh, the way you prefer. Yes. So the main benefits for us using HOP before Utopia training course was that we were able to, um, to actually start building already the sense of community of Utopians mm -hmm. since for us it's a longer process afterwards so with two residential courses and, and, and some space in between. Uh, plus, it allows us to already start exploring some of the uh, some of the main topics of the training course itself beforehand. And the third one, it also gives um, kind of a reason for for the participants to start reflecting on their own thoughts uh, that are related to these topics of the training course. And the platform also offers this possibility for them to share additional resources. So there, there were people who would, for example, find an interesting article or a useful web page that they share it with the others. And, and then this allowed us to expand also the, the different um, materials people could access mm -hmm. as a preparation. In, in the work we're doing at the moment, we mostly uh, develop uh, blended but also online uh, learning opportunities in the frame of the pilot project Yokomo, which focuses on the competence model for youth workers to work internationally and we do that through the hub platform which is a, a very interesting space with a lot of different opportunities to, to create different formats and different offers. Um, so for instance we have indeed um, I would say elements of the residential courses that are happening online so this blended learning uh, but we're also developing a material that is meant to be accessed anytime by anyone who wishes being self-assessment form or really online courses. Uh, so the experience so far shows that yes it works and it's possible but it takes time, it takes a lot of preparation and again the recommendation in this case would really be think beforehand really what is your plan, what do you want to achieve, what is the learning you want to focus on. My experience shows very much that um, preparing an online course is a heavy task, it's a time-taking task and uh, 
It seems that sometimes within uh, different teams it's a bit uh, undervalued. Uh, the online course is nothing that you can prepare um, in the evenings, on you know, in the breaks, uh, uh, whenever you have a bit more free time for you among your residential courses. I think it's also important that anybody who wants to coordinate an online learning course knows what online learning is about because it's very difficult to communicate what you would need, what you would like from this course if you have never been involved in an online learning course yourself and then this also if you if you are aware, if you know how it is and what it takes then it's also easier to communicate this to these people who are making the actual technical implementation of the course. I met one kind of interesting paradox with MOOC, especially I think MOOC on youth policy, uh, because MOOCs are open, we don't do any selection. So even for the creators um, of courses, they have certain idea, let's say it would be about European program or it would be about European youth policy. Um, but uh, anybody can join from any kind of country and uh, people were joining from all over the world so the course attracts for example 99 countries but the content is prepared with the idea that it's for, for Europeans and of course naturally people from other continents from other countries they would be looking for um, content which is kind of relevant for them I think it was the same for Erasmus Plus. In terms of the pitfalls, um, the time is an advantage, but also you can easily lose people in lengthy processes, and especially if you have residentials and people feel this uh, excitement of being together and so on, then somehow the online part might be a bit anticlimactic in terms of the group at least. And you still have some young people, and not just young, who live for the moment of the residential, and then for them the online part doesn't give the thrill that the residential does. So this is something that I think still needs to be solved. And then plus uh, what you were talking about, that it does need to be seen as a whole uh, and hence needs to re require competences of the, those who are facilitating and designing it to see it as a whole process and not segments of residentials and online and different opportunities. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think in terms of topics, really any youth work topic can be, um, can be developed and, and delivered through the MOOC but it's more maybe on the on which level the learning is happening. I think MOOCs are very good for um, providing structured knowledge so people actually can learn things, they can learn practices, they can see examples of projects uh, uh, or practices around Europe. Um, it might be a bit more challenging to deal with skills or attitudes because skills require practice, attitude requ requires reflection, discussion with others. It's also not impossible. But uh, uh, I think working on skills and attitudes would require um, not only co um, viewing the content, reading or watching, but it would require doing practical tasks. So it would go somewhere uh, and it would happen somewhere, let's say, with colleagues uh, where people work, uh, somewhere in the community and so on. For me, it would be that actually or youth work organizations already uh, experimenting and launching more and more online uh, learning opportunities for youth workers, leaders. And I think that's a good sign that national agencies can also take up this possibility and explore what else can be added to a growing number of online learning opportunities for youth work. So for me, that's reassuring that investment can really reach youth workers, youth leaders uh, with topics which also maybe not covered yet.